In the last session, we talked about Sangin, Musakala, and Auzad, and how we were pushing the enemy to the north, and then from Musakala, pinching back to the uh, northeast, getting into what many people referred to as the heartland of the insurgency here at Helmand, up in Kajaki, and in uh, what we call Zamindavar. I thought it was necessary to push uh, to Kajaki in order to maintain uh, momentum in order to defeat the enemy to the point that the ANSF could begin to manage the security situation on their own. I thought if we pushed the enemy far, far enough out and we established the police and the ANA and the civil order police in the positions that we would put them in a place where they would be able to manage the insurgency uh, for the long haul. Obviously the Kajaki Dam is important because water is important to the province. It's a farming uh, community up and down the uh, Hellman River and there's two things that you need, water and dirt, in order to farm. So there's a lot of talk about the capacity of the dam relative to uh, electrical uh, power generation and that type of thing, but really for me it was to allow the Afghans to control the water. It was to open up the lines of communication all the way north along Route 611 to the dam, and it was to maintain relentless pressure uh, on the enemy where we knew he had uh, what he considered safe havens and where we knew he felt uh, he could bed down relatively freely. And that pressure on the enemy is uh, ultimately uh, why I wanted to uh, move towards uh, Kajaki. I'd really wanted to press to uh, Kajaki, frankly, in the spring of 2011, but because we were committed in the uh, upper Goreshk Valley, we didn't have the uh, forces necessary to make the move uh, north of Sangin. So as the summer fighting season sort of began to uh, wane, uh, if you will, we were in a position where we could reallocate the uh, forces, move forces, in this case, we uh, move forces uh, from Marja, uh, took a little bit of time, but we repositioned slowly starting in the uh, beginning of August to put ourselves in a position by uh, late September so that we could make the move uh, to Kajaki. We knew that we didn't want to push straight up 611 and into the uh, IED belts. We didn't want to fight through IED belts and knew the enemy would uh, fight a delaying action, so we tried to put a package together that would allow us to use uh, all the tools in the toolkit, if you will, as we advanced uh, up uh, into Kajaki. We wanted to keep the enemy uh, off balance. We wanted to do uh, some deception. We wanted to integrate uh, special operations forces, information ops, again, use everything uh, everything that we had available in order to keep the enemy off balance. I'll tell you that in 11 day period leading up to uh, what we call D-Day in uh, Kajaki, in 11 day period we did 22 operations with the Special Operations uh, Forces. And one of the most effective was our integration of the Afghan uh, commandos. Twice in Kajaki, we inserted the Afghan commandos for a 24 or 48 hour period and then we landed on top of them with conventional forces. Those conventional forces were partnered with Afghan National Army forces. They did a battle handover of the on the ground and then the commandos uh, retrograded and the conventional forces again partnered with the Afghan National Army forces continued uh, the fight up there in Kajaki and it worked uh, perfectly for us on two uh, separate occasions. I think it's probably the first time that it's been done with the battle handover here in Afghanistan. And really the results of all the uh, coordination, the deception, the soft integration, the use of commandos, the partnered uh, forces, the result was that the enemy was overwhelmed. In fact, uh, very quickly we gained access to the dam, we opened the road uh, to Kajaki, we forced the enemy uh, to withdraw to the north and that's where he remained uh, as the winter approached. This was a significant achievement, not just for the uh, coalition forces, but for the Afghans, for the provincial uh, government. I'm sure that we caught uh, many by surprise with, uh, based on the success, but really 
It was the Marines on the ground and the Afghan forces who performed uh, magnificently. We couldn't have done it without the support of the MLG, without the support of the uh, wing. They were all critical uh, to the success and the ability of us to maintain uh, momentum. And it was the integration of all the assets, all the resources, and the hard work of our uh, soft forces that allowed, allowed us to be as successful as we were. So we've now gained some momentum up there with the uh, provincial government, with the uh, district government. Uh, for the first time, this is the first time the people have seen, you know, Afghan security forces. The first time they've seen governance, uh, if you will, in years. And uh, they see it, and I think they want some more of it. And we expect uh, Kajiki to continue to develop uh, in the weeks and the uh, months ahead. We'd like to, uh, we would like to see the road. Paved. We think we can improve some irrigation project. There's works to be done, or there's work to be done in Kajaki, but we uh, we have had some uh, great success initially uh, as we moved our forces and secured the dam.